Hey guys, welcome back to episode nine of the uh, Aston Martin Rapid Rebuild. Um, we bought this car thinking it was going to be just bodywork damage. And unfortunately, it, as you can see in the previous videos, it's turned out to be a lot more than just body damage. It's engine damage as well. And um, most people would have given up a long time ago. I bought the car and was determined to get it back on the road, which is why I pushed on. Um, but as we're going to see in this episode, can we actually repair it? Is it going to be possible? Um, you're going to see more damage on the engine than you saw in the previous videos. So if you haven't watched the previous videos, I strongly suggest you go back and watch the earlier ones and then make your way back to here. But you don't have to. You can watch this one and watch those ones afterwards. Um, but we're going to see what else the engine has in store for us because so far we found a lot of damage and now there's more. Um, so we're going to dive into this video and I'll catch you at the end. So let's get this, uh, this oil baffle off and then we'll be able to get a proper look. And also once we've got this cover off here, we can then see inside and see what's underneath. But it'll all be little chunks of metal which have all made its way into the bottom. So that's how it's supposed to be. That's how it is. And that's the other side. That's the wall. And that's the wall for cylinder six. Right, let's check this out. Let's check out the engine block. This is the front of the engine block. Yep, all looks good so far. No issues, nothing out of the norm until you get to the back of the engine. And as you can see, there is a massive hole, um, which shouldn't be there, just in case you're wondering. Um, you know, the, the wall should not be like this, but this is fine. This can be repaired fairly easily it seems so that wouldn't be too bad that is fairly bad um, but what's worse is when you come to this side that is the other side of the wall just in case you're wondering it's supposed to look like that it now looks like that so not good at all um, the cylinder walls are actually lined so if you actually come you can get new linings for them so that's not a problem um, the rest of this stuff doesn't look too bad actually that all looks fine um, I don't think there's any scoring on any of those but we can do a proper inspection of that um, just looking at the crank as well so this again being the front of the crank um, doesn't look too bad everything kind of looks okay probably around here is where it starts looking a little bit um, iffy uh, that looks to be slightly bent uh, that bearing over there also probably needs to be sorted out as well if we're going to repair it at all not really too sure what's going on and uh, that is the um, uh, that probably needs a little bit as well so I expected more damage on the crank to be honest with you and I guess I'm fortunate that there's not um, what's there is probably repairable this is questionable because I don't know if that can be repaired. Um, we're going to show the machine shop tomorrow and see what they say. Um, the additional complication here is that this isn't a steel block, this is uh, an alloy block. So that in itself could mean curtains for the whole project or find another block, which I'm going to be doing this evening. I've already spoken to one guy back in the UK um, and he. Um, may well know of a DB9 engine that's available so we want to look into that option um, but it's frustrating now the reason why this has happened right this is banks 6 and 12 this is the back of the engine now I've mentioned before that this engine originally started life as a Ford engine and Ford made it as a V8 which is up to here or a V10 which is up to here now um, that seems to generally be fine 
What Aston Martin have done is they've added on a further two cylinders on the back. And what that means then is that the engine's having to work extra hard to deliver oil over here. And I think there must be some flaw as part of the design because I'm not the first person to have come across this where cylinders six and 12 seize because they don't have enough oil. Now, one thing I would say is that if you own an Aston Martin, don't panic. What you need to do is make sure that your oil level is always constantly on maximum. Um, do not let it drop low. Constantly check it every week, you know, depending on how often you drive it, um, but check to make sure it has oil. Because I guarantee you with this engine, what's actually happened is the oil, the oil level was probably slightly low. As a result, the oil pressure was low and we had the situation where one of the cylinders broke apart another one was jammed in and it's no coincidence or you know that the rear two cylinders are the ones that are suffering um, as a result of this so if you've got an aston martin already just make sure it's topped up to maximum level and nothing less um, but this is going to be going to the machine shop tomorrow i think we're going to hear news that it's not repairable and it's toast and I'm also expecting a block not to be available or if one is for it to be too expensive. So where does that leave me now? Um, God I wasn't expecting there to be a problem with the block I guess uh, it was always a possibility but I was kind of hoping that it wouldn't cause a problem and it would just be something with the crank and I had already found a crank just in case um, a brand new crank so that would have been fairly okay the problem of the block now really um, creates a whole new dimension to this whole thing because it could potentially not only have I not come across a block so far uh, so it might mean potentially buying an engine uh, which would then break the budget and make it not feasible um, but even if I was to find a block it wouldn't necessarily be cheap uh, and again that might break the budget so I need to decide what needs to be done um, the problem of repairing this particular block is um, I could end up with a repaired block goes back into the car and face a similar problem because it's not um, you know the, the repair itself might give further further issues um, it's, it is known that if a repair isn't done properly then what happens is you do end up having oil pressure problems and this engine naturally suffers from oil pressure problems so I'm not even sure that the idea of repairing the engine is even a good one um, I might just be opening myself up to further problems down the line and the thing is for me also this has always been a car that I've wanted to use on a daily basis and so you know whether that's even a good idea is um, questionable uh, there's no point in going through this whole expense and hassle of repairing this engine and then facing exactly the same problems six months down the line less more whatever um, so I need to really think carefully about this but I shall keep you up to date with what's going on. Um, this is going to develop over the next 24, 48 hours. So watch out for the next video. If you haven't subscribed already, you might want to because, um, yeah, it's not over yet. So guys, I don't know what to say. Um, this, there's a lot of damage in this engine and I've been getting a lot of um, uh, input from other people in the industry. Uh, mechanics, engine rebuilders, and asking them what they think, whether we can actually repair this or not. And I'm going to be going through that in uh, a future episode, in the next episode. Um, but as you can see, there's just so much damage. I mean, there's, there's damage to the top, the middle, the bottom, everything. Um, everything is damaged. And, um, you know, there's actually more damage than, uh, you know, we're actually seeing right now. And as you'll see in future episodes, we find even more things that are damaged on it. Um, the damage is one side. I mean, you know, potentially repairing it um, is, is possible. But the, the, the cost is really something that we have to consider as well. Um, and, you know, Aston Martin parts are not cheap. 
but I've got a little secret which I'm going to let let you know about in uh, future episodes, um, which um, will help us to to manage both the um, the damage and the cost itself. So let's see, let's see. Anyway. We'll catch you in the next episode where we continue this journey to rebuild this engine and rebuild this car. Thanks very much and if you haven't done so already, subscribe, like the video and I'll catch you next time.